Let's create a directory website in Next.js with the new AI tool Bolt. So it's writing a bunch of code for me. I don't feel like looking through it all. Let's make the left side filterable. So when I click on a category, it only shows those businesses. Again, it's writing more code for me. Let's make the businesses each have their own pages so we can drill down on them. Uh Oh, we have an error, but it's too much code written so far. So let's just ask it to fix its own error. Okay, we have another error. Again, you fix it. Now let's create a blog for this site. Okay, now I have three problems. I'm really not up to speed on what's been written so far. I don't know what these errors mean. Fix it. It didn't fix it. Fix it. Fix it. Fix it, fix it. Don't act like you haven't done that. You know we're guilty of it. And this is what's becoming of us. And look, I'm not at all anti-AI. I use it daily. But this cycle of yelling at AI to give us what we want and copying and pasting everything it gives us will dumb you down and make you completely irrelevant over the next few years. The NVIDIA CEO has said that AI will bring about the end of coders, that coding as a career will become obsolete. Well, if you're a developer who has resorted to letting AI write all of your code, solve all of your problems, and then copy and paste whatever it gives you because you don't feel like reading through it all, then yes, we will become obsolete. And maybe that's what these CEOs want or what they expect to happen. But in reality, AI isn't going to end software engineering as a career. It will just dumb you down enough to weed you out of the industry. If you stop writing code, reading code, and rely on AI to do it all for you, you will slowly become irrelevant, and your sharpness as a thinker, a problem solver, will deteriorate. And we don't want this. We see it in schools now, in colleges. Kids are using AI to give them all of the answers. And if everyone is doing this, imagine being the one kid who actually puts in the work and understands the material. You'd be a genius. You'd be miles ahead of the rest. But we also simultaneously don't want to cast aside the value that AI brings to us currently either. AI innovations can provide for us shortcuts, but we have to be strategic in how we take these shortcuts. Calculators may have made us lazier, but they freed us up to be more innovative, using them as a tool alongside of our innovations. Social media can cause one person to doom scroll for an hour and not realize the time they've completely wasted, and it can give another person, with self-control, thousands of people around the world to market their product to and to connect with. And similarly, there's a thin line between AI dumbing us down and AI bringing about a 10x in productivity. It can slowly make you dependent on it and irrelevant in this career, or it can be a sort of co-intelligence that works alongside of your human-centric experience. Now we open this video with bolt.new, which is a new AI code editor, and it's amazing. I'm not knocking that specifically. However, Play around with it long enough the wrong way and you're going to get frustrated. Either it isn't doing what you want it to because you don't really know what you're doing, or it isn't doing what you want it to because you know exactly what it's doing and it's not doing what you actually want it to. Hope that made sense. Or you implement some feature with it and then you bring in some new feature next that undoes the feature before that one completely. And the temptation here is speed over quality. And if you do this long enough, you'll end up with an app that you have no clue how it was written and are far too deep into it to try and go back and understand it. So in this video, I wanna help you draw this fine line that we talked about earlier between becoming a victim of this technological dumb down and actually becoming a 10X engineer. Here are three principles to follow as developers. Number one, evaluate the code. At every step you take in AI writing code for you, be sure to take the time to understand and what it just wrote. Seven times out of 10, you will agree with most of what was written. For instance, at the beginning of this video, when I asked Bolt to make each listing linked to its own page, it simply added a business folder with an ID wildcard folder and a page template. Standard Next.js. And that's nine times out of 10, which you or I would have done, no problem. But at this point, you, number one, want to read over it and tweak it as necessary in context of your code base. And number two, you want to be up to date on what has been added to your code base so you don't down the road get stuck yelling at AI to fix its own issues. The code is yours, but AI just did the heavy lifting for you. Don't let AI drive you, you drive it. It serves you. This means you read through the code that it spits out at you. This not only keeps you sharp, but it keeps potential malicious code from entering your code base. Wild example and shout out to Matt P on this tweet. But what if it had this buried in the middle of it and you didn't review it? This particular code would leak your environment variables to a malicious endpoint. You need to be the code reviewer, the tweaker, and have the final say as to what makes it from the AI response 
to your code base. AI is your co-intelligence, your personal assistant, and that relationship needs to remain firm. Don't be lazy and don't let the senior devs reading your code think that was really you who slopped it all together. And if you're learning to code or still somewhat new to it, you probably should not be using AI for coding at all. Learn the craft first, then let it assist you later down the road. One exception may be to use it to help you learn like a tutor, have it write out solutions and then explain to you what's going on. However, I'm not sure I would want my code to look at all like much of what's produced by AI today. Maybe paste in great code written by great developers and then have it explain how it works or add comments to it to help you. Perhaps that's a better use case. And if you're proficient at coding already, use it as an assistant only. Let it help you, don't help it. Remember, it will dumb you down and slowly make you more and more irrelevant in this industry to the point where you can't succeed in it anymore. All right, number two, go all in on the mundane tasks. So one of the best uses of AI is on mundane or monotonous tasks. Imagine this, I have a long list of my blog post titles, like 300 or so, and for some reason, I need these not in plain text, but in a JSON file, in JSON format. Normally, you would have to add quotes around all of these and commas and open and close brackets, and this takes wasted time. Here, AI can do it for me in two seconds. What if I had this one long function call that updates the user subscription, and I realize that I'm actually supposed to send this as form data, which means one approach would be to wrap all of these values in a body.get. Now again, you don't have to do this one by one. That's wasted time. Instead, just provide AI with a very detailed prompt and voila, your conversion is complete. And if you're a content creator and you need YouTube title ideas or you have a script and you wanna take it, clean it up and write an SEO optimized blog post from it and generate a title that will rank well and meta descriptions and all of that, AI is your number one bet. It's my sidekick in all of these tasks. So no more manual mundane tasks. There are many monotonous things that steal your time away during the day. Let AI handle it. Experiment with it and see what best works for you in your daily workflow. Allow it to work as co-intelligence to make you more productive. And then number three, think of your AI assistant as a person, not a bot. I know this sounds really weird, but let me explain. There's a guy by the name of Ethan Molik who wrote this book called Co-Intelligence, Living and Working with AI. And he made this insightful observation in an interview. He said, what gives me some hope with this technology is that because it's so human-like, it's more natural to work with. Humans used to work with smart team members to solve problems. It's one thing if this thing becomes an all-intelligent god machine, but at the current level where you're interacting with this thing and it's flawed, that's where it can be useful to be human-like. People get mad because it messes up. Well, I hope it's not going to be 100% accurate all the time. I hope it's not going to be trusted to run autonomously without oversight. If so, we're doomed. Instead, it's important not to go to the two extremes. The first, tossing the whole thing out as some failed mission. And then the second is to expect it to do everything perfectly. If we see it as a sidekick there to assist us, being in charge of the whole thing, then like any smart human coworker, we have to evaluate the results at the end of the day. We have to reason with it and then make a call. If you had someone beside you and you were bouncing questions off of it, you're not gonna do everything it says without question. And you shouldn't do everything AI says or accept everything it gives us either. We should treat it as a sidekick and nothing more. And that sidekick can, if used properly, really make us more productive in a way that doesn't also equal more hours or effort. So what AI flavor am I using? Easy, I started with ChatGPT, then I stumbled across Claude and realized that Claude is miles ahead of ChatGPT in programming. Then I got turned on to Perplexity Pro, where I can use any of these models in one place, and I now use that exclusively. This video is not sponsored, it's just what I currently use. As to code editors like Bolt, I'm not quite there yet. I tried Cursor and I just don't quite like it that close to my code, if that makes sense yet. We'll see where that goes down the road. But what are you using? I'd love to hear about it down in the comments. What's your approach to using AI to boost your productivity? Are you growing too attached? Is it perhaps dumbing you down? Let me know. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider doing so, and I'll see you in the next video.